Cybernetics is distinguished by the questions we ask. How can peace as a need satisfy our tensions, conflicts, differences, our asynchronicities? There is always the idea of radical change. The radical change takes place in the mind. Circularity, some say the fundamental. The earth keeps turning and you have to sit somewhere. Circularity it means if A then B and if B then A. And it seems that we have um, a way of looking at the world which moves us from flatness into hierarchy and that that is something that we do with our thinking and it's very powerful and very useful, but it's not something that we should be uh, imposing on the world. It's something we should understand as a way of thinking that leads to certain types of understanding. No wonder so many people found cybernetics and systems theory unintelligible. We are a society that is to put simply, counter cybernetic. <laughs> it is an attempt to correct an erroneous way of looking at the world and at knowledge in general. There is a tradition in the American society for cybernetics for some of its members to address some of the illusions that underlie our hegemonic society that objectivity is not only possible, but desirable. To be a participant observer is actually problematic in American society. Mm -hmm. That aggression is our fundamental emotion. I claim that the biology of love is central because I claim that love is the emotion that constitutes the social. That peace is something to be achieved. If you investigate the central structure of our daily discourse, including the media and also our own in the domestic talk, including sentences said repeatedly in situations of schools, teaching, and so forth, you will find that every time the term peace is mentioned as a kind of a consequence. We have to do something so that there be peace. So you better do that, otherwise there won't be peace. So peace is described as something which has to be achieved. Mm. If we could declare peace to be one of the needs, like hunger, which has to be met by food, and thirst, which has to be met by drink, and tiredness, which has to be met by sleep, and then you sleep and sleep, so that you can do something in order to become tired again. So this, this is the definition of needs. Needs are conditions that have to be met so that they can happen again. There are one description of life. One. If I could have peace sorted into the table of content the title needs, it would give us a different English language. We would understand, for instance, that we need peace and since we need peace, we have to meet it with our conflicts. We have to meet it with our differences. Food satisfies hunger. Yes. And sleep satisfies tiredness. What does peace satisfy? Conflict. Conflict, yes. Hunger is satisfied by food, right? Thirst is satisfied by drink. Peace is satisfied by us being able to have our conflicts. War prevents us having our conflicts. Do you understand that? War prevents us having our conflicts. I don't want to do without our conflicts. I love them. But I hate it. It's the people who take them and make use of them for profit and power. So conflict, yes. War, no. So peace is not to ward off conflicts and to avoid all controversy, controversy and confrontation. We have to learn in a language, languaging, which does not assume peace as a reward, but as a condition for conflict. That is the desirability of 
conflict has to be celebrated so that it can meet peace. Every eye not only needs peace, but wants peace. So asynchronicity is an invitation for generating newness through conversations that turns objects into rhythms. Provocative conversations. Provocative conversations. Provocative conversations. Always nested in the biology of love.